Will Microsoft take the crown with their new AI image creation tool inside of Bing? Let's uh, find out. Just a short while ago, Bing introduced GPT-4 into their uh, search. And yesterday it was unveiled that their Bing image create would be available for, well, mostly all, which is their new AI generation tool. And uh, that's what we're gonna check out today. And to the person who stole my Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. So if you go to bing.com slash create, this is where you end up. And this is the user interface for Microsoft Bing's image creator. And it is based upon Dolly 2 and set to compete with Midjourney and uh, Stable Diffusion and well, any other new AI tool out there. So here are some images that have been created by the community. And if you scroll over these, you can see the prompt that was made. So for this example, you have a robot made of analog stereo equipment, light purple background, digital art. And this is an older image. You can see five months ago. So this has been available with uh, Dolly 1, I believe, for select users. And this is also older because it's 512 by 512. If you create something today, you will have the new algorithm and the new models and the images will be larger. Here's an example I did. And if you take this image here, which is middle-aged man portrait close-up realistic skin texture beard we have as a default 1024 by 1024 pixels which is basically double the size that stable diffusion has as a default now midjourney v5 has gone bigger but it's still a paid option bing is free for now now something that bing and dolly 2 does well are these close-up these face portraits and while they're not mj five quality as of right now, MJ is still a paid option. Here's another example where we have the prompt woman portrait close up, realistic skin texture freckles. And it's fairly decent. There's some weird lines under the eyes here and the hair around the eyes here aren't perfect. You can see some webbing in it, but it's getting there. Now, what it does kind of terrible to be honest are faces when they're at a distance. So let's take this for example. Here's a cyberpunk man and a cyberpunk woman in a neon city. At a glance, you might feel, oh, this looks okay. This visor here looks great. But as soon as you check the faces, they're all jarbled and messed up. And this is something I noticed overall with this Bing image creator. As soon as the faces are smaller, it kind of fails with them. And perhaps there's a trick to that. I don't know yet. And here is a, a wizard, a fantasy wizard, and the hands are all messed up here. So while it can create some good images, it's also not great with particular types of images. Here's another example where I put in digital painting of a beautiful forest with shining lights, a calm pond and mist and fireflies in Studio Ghibli style. And this, it performs quite well. Now this is more of a digital painting and it's, a, it's an okay style. However, here's an example from Midjourney. So a comparison here and Midjourney V5 surely has that extra oomph for that extra punch in the images. And looking at this image here, this is a Midjourney V5, an image I used for the MJ5 video uh, where I asked uh, a photorealistic man showing his hand. And why all of this are okay-ish, except for, you know, the, the hands here and the thumb here. Again, they're okay -ish. If you compare that to Dolly 2 or Bing, here we have some hands that are okay. This hand's pretty good, but the face is all messed up. And while this hand at a glance might look okay, it actually has six fingers. And again, the face is kind of weird. If you find a way to fix these faces, let me know. Might be a way to prompt around that. This hand is, well, it's a little wide, but it's okay with the depth of field here. Here's another example I did of a portrait of a woman in dramatic lighting of f1.4 with a 35 millimeter lens. And while some of these look fairly okay, as soon as you can check the details, you can see the hair is kind of webbed together. This one's fairly okay, but you can't see a lot of the details because of how it's shot with the lighting. And this is the exact same prompt used in Midjourney V5. And I can assure you they all look much better, even if you uh, zoom in and check. Like they're much, much more realistic. Especially this one here. 
you can even see. I mean, I was critical when I looked at these in MJ5, but compared to what we're getting here, it's kind of a different beast. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't all bad. It's actually a pretty good tool. You can get some great images out of it. You just have to get some more generations going. Here's a pixel art I was trying to do. And what I found kind of cool with this one, let's take this one with the bigger pixels, for example, is the pixels are all roughly the same size here. And that's kind of something that impressed me. While a lot of our other pixel stuffs are just, you know, they look pixelated. But you can clearly see it's just uh, an effect. I don't know if that will translate in the smaller ones here, but someone working with the indie game dev, you can probably comment below and, and say either if this works for you or if any other AI tool does it better. Now, these images aren't the greatest, I'll admit that, but we can try something else. So now we're doing pixel art of a cat and we have a 30 second wait here because my boost time has expired. It used to be, I think I started with 10 images that went a little quicker than these here. And here we have pixel art of a cat. And to me, this looks fairly okay. We have a broken pixel up here, but apart from that, all pixels seem to be intact. Again, if you know a lot about pixels and pixel art, correct me in the comments below. Let's make another comparison with MJ5. And here we have a picture of a shocked, surprised, beautiful woman in portrait and beautiful lighting shining through a vibrant, colorful garden. And it looks a little bit like this. Let's take, just copy paste this and slap that in here. And here we have our results. And honestly, they're awful. But this is free. You don't need any hardware. You can just play around with it. And you can get some good images if you have some time and patience, but don't expect it to be either mid journey or stable fusion out of the box. But this is, um, well, it's like day one, they've been working on it for some time, but it's day one for most people. So we'll see how it improves. At least they can create stuff like this, which is, you know, fairly good. But for now, stable fusion, mid journey, kings on the throne, depending on what you want to do. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. As always, have a good one. See ya.